Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Friday Morning at the Fun House alongside the illustrious Mr. Martin Popoff. Yes. What's up, my yes. friend? Ah, doing okay. Looking forward to this one, too. Yes, on, a, on a day when we're supposed to get another snowstorm, but just a small one. So Oof. Yeah, no snow here. Um, I'm not quite sure what it's supposed to do. It was like 24 when I got up this morning. It's pretty cold because it's been like in the 40s to 50s the last couple of days. I don't know. Winter, winter's still kind of hanging on, I guess, yeah. as it should because it's technically still winter. But yeah. yeah, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I, I, I've gotten to the point where I'm just tired of looking at the weather forecast at this point. I'm just kind of living every day and just saying whatever's going to come is going to come. So we'll see what happens. But it's but also we'll Rock and Roll Hall of Fame season, isn't it? That's right. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, it is that time. Once again, everybody, uh, I, I've made a habit in recent years of uh, doing shows, mostly rant shows on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominations. We love to make fun of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I know there's people out there who watch this channel and watch us and love for us to talk about the nominations every year there's other people like why are you wasting your time talking about the nomination nobody cares about the rock and roll hall of fame it's a joke and yeah but it's fun talking about this stuff anyway regardless of whether we think it's valid or not who cares so we have come here today to go through the nominations we're going to tell you who we think should get in who maybe just misses the mark and who we just don't think belong at all. And then maybe at the end, we'll give you some glaring omissions. So I put together a fancy PowerPoint deck here for, for today. So what we're going to do uh, while I get that set up, Martin's going to kind of give us a little intro to the nominations this year, and then we'll go, we'll show you who they all are. And then we'll go into our whole discussion of it. So bear with me a second here, Martin, Martin, if you'd want to just chat on for a second while I get this set up. Yeah. So, I mean, I always feel that the whole idea with uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I'm kind of on board. I'm, I'm one of the guys who sort of defends it because I've seen so many times over the years where these things don't have traction and uh, and uh, and there's odd ways to put them together. They don't have a physical space. And so it's kind of like an online thing. Um you know, and I like that this thing's been around for a long, long time and it's got that nice kind of organizing factor of, you know, your debut album has to be 25 years old uh, to, to be nominated. And then, you know, the nominating on and then and then a lot of people talk about it. So that's a kind of traction as well. Uh, and I think they generally don't do as bad a job as the complainers complain about. I mean, I really loathe and complain hugely about the Grammys and things like that. I just I just see no redeeming factor in that. I think the whole thing's a complete and utter mess. But the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you know, as the years go on and the bands get in and we stumble through the whole thing, they're gen ge they're generally covering off things that most of uh, most of the complainers probably were surprised that they ever did cover off. So I don't think it's terribly terribly terrible, but um you know, having said that, this this latest one is not as fun to me as as, uh, as the previous one or two. I mean, I remember one where, uh, was it last year? But, you know, New York Dolls were nominated. MC5 was nominated. Nominated. They didn't get in. I think Motorhead's been nominated now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's been some pretty good ones where there's been some good nominations. This one's kind of tepid. Um, but we're going to go through them all. And I'll, uh, I'll, Pete, I'll, I'll throw it back to you, I guess. Are, are you ready to roll with showing? I am. I will are. make one quick okay. comment, though, that I totally yeah. agree with you. I would rather talk about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame any day of the week than give two seconds to the Grammys. Yeah. Because I sure. think that's utter garbage. So yeah. I've thought that way for many years. All right. So we're going to run through the nominees here. We've got uh, some photos of all of them here. So drum roll, please. And I think these are all listed alphabetically. So we've got uh, A Tribe Called Quest. We've got Kate Bush, the lovely Kate Bush, Cheryl Crow, the lovely Cheryl Crow, Missy Elliott, the lovely Missy Elliott, the equally lovely Iron Maiden. <laughs> look at how lovely those guys look. Uh, we've got Joy Division slash New Order, right? That's a little complicated right there. Cindy Lauper, George Michael, Willie Nelson. Rage Against the Machine, Soundgarden, The Spinners, The White Stripes, and Warren Zevon. So now that we've got that part out of the way, so some of you, if you're if you're hearing this list for the first time, some of you might be thinking, hmm, 
there's some like non rock and roll acts on that list. Yes, of course, because that's the MO of the whole, right? They like to mix it all up. So what we've done is we've picked out our five bottom, our five middle, and then the four that we think that we would put in. Okay, and we'll give the reasons why. So I'll have Martin uh, start us off here. Uh, we'll, we'll start at the bottom. Yeah, so I mean, my main theme here is, yeah, I, I don't particularly connect with these artists. That shouldn't really matter. But, the, you know, the main point here is that is this whole debate on uh, is are, are they rock and roll? You know, there already is. There is a hip hop Hall of Fame. There's a country Hall of Fame. Um, you know, I, I don't know how, how many other Hall of Fames there are. I mean, you know, we, you can break it down by countries and then there's the magazine ones and some of those are picking up. We've got the MTV Awards, the Grammys, the uh, I think the American Music Awards is over now. I think I don't think that that exists anymore. Um, but um, yeah, so so that's always been a big debate here. So my bottom ones, I've got Missy Elliott in here, but, you know, Missy Elliott's got a platinum, you know, and, and you know, essentially I've based uh, some of my thoughts on, you know, the, the one, the one sort of, uh, you know, obvious uh, characteristic is, uh, is how big a seller these people were, how big the impact is, but other things as we go on, you know, how participating they are in, in the rock and roll world, do they continue to make music, that kind of thing as well. But Missy Elliott, platinum 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 double platinum and then there's this weird you know a wiki sometimes has uh you know you, sometimes you see numbers that say you know eight hundred thousand, and and then it doesn't even say gold or things like that or or um uh you you see 1.2 million in the u.s it says it right there yet it only says gold so uh this is one of those cases so there's one that's maybe gold or platinum another that's maybe gold or platinum um, 97 to 2005, not a very long career. And that, that always, I'm never happy about that either. Uh, I've got the spinners in here. They had five gold records in a row though. 73 to 76 formed in 54. So this is a really long ago act. And you know, this whole R and B thing, when you're talking about these bass acts, I think here you, you really do want to put these bands in because it is the history of rock and roll, right? R and B. And especially if you go back to 54, I've got the white stripes in here as well. Um, you know, they, they were massive, massive sellers. They've got, they've got a platinum, uh, one of these maybe double platinums uh, and maybe gold and gold, uh, a duo, um, not a long-standing band, 97 to 2007. I just never really connected in a big way. And Cyndi Lauper is kind of a funny one here too, where you've got a bit of that combination of, is it rock and roll, but where else would you put her? I mean, she, she kind of, you know, pretty much belongs in this thing, but again, we're, we're not talking about a massive, massive act. Uh, so unusual, six times platinum and then a double platinum for True Colors, but um, made a lot of records, uh, which is kind of cool uh, and uh, kept making records for a long time. Oh, yeah, well, I've got one more. So so here's the messy one. Um, and, and here's me being objective and saying I would love these guys in, but I don't really think they should go in. I've got the Joy Division slash New Order thing here. I hate when they combine two bands like that. Drives me crazy, right? Um, or, you know, you got the solo artist and you got to worry about the solo artist versus being in a band thing. So, so yeah, I've, I've got Joy Division New Order in my bottom one as well, because just not that big a band. I mean, people love them. They're critically acclaimed. Uh, New Order, you know, more so uh, as a bigger band and influenced a few more things, a little more synth pop, a little more dance. But Joy Division is kind of a funny one. They're in that gothic zone. Yeah. Um, they are well respected and stuff, but yeah, it's, it's just, it's just two albums, um, you know, and a lot of compilation stuff, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm putting them, I'm putting them in the bottom ones because I just hate this mess thing. So those are my, that's my bottom tier. Well, we're not too different here. So, uh, I've got Cindy Lauper in the bottom. <sighs> She's a difficult one. I was kind of on the fence with her. I mean, mm -hmm. to me, she's like. She's very well-rounded, you know, she's an actress, she's a celebrity, an activist, she's got the music thing going. How influential was she on the musical side? I don't really know. You know, lots of Grammy nominations. I mean, she only won twice, yeah. but man, she was nominated like a million times. Yeah. A couple really big singles, two massive albums. And you're right, she's released a lot of albums, but really she had those two big albums that was really it. She's got the iconic look. Um, I think her exposure... Uh, to the mainstream audience outside of just music, I think makes her kind of like a sentimental pick uh, for some. 
I just don't know if I'm, I don't know how Hall of Fame worthy she actually is. She's, I'm on the fence with her. I, I, I personally like Cindy Lauper. I just, I'm not quite sold on her. Uh, Joy Division and New Order, again, I agree with 100%. It's kind of messy. All sorts of musical styles. I mean, Joy Division was together for such a short period of time. Very few albums. I always have an issue with a band getting in with, you know, one or two albums. It's kind of strange. Um, and I think, too, uh, you know, New Order were a much bigger band around for a lot longer and, you know, pretty fairly large and, you know, big in the UK, but really not a lot of impact in the rest of the world. I think sometimes that works against bands. So I'm going to I'm going to keep them out here. Uh, Missy Elliott. I mean, it's hard to deny all six of her albums going platinum plus. Right. Uh, especially here in the States. So, you know, and she's one of the highest charting female rap artists of all time. But again, it's rap. It's not rock. I have an issue with that. Uh, she's deserving of accolades for sure, but it's not rock for me. So I got to pass on her. Um, the White Stripes, immensely popular band at the time. Some big albums, some legendary singles, no doubt influential, I think. But I mean, it's barely been the 25 year minimum for them, right? They got to wait in line. Sorry. I, I always have an issue with these bands that like yep. they, they just hit the criteria for the 25th year of their debut album. And yet you're going to put them in immediately over bands that have been waiting for that have been around for 40, 50 years. I have an issue with that. So they got to wait. The other one, my last one here, <clears throat> it almost pains me to say this, but I'm going to go with Warren Zevon. Okay. I like his music. I think he misses the mark here, though. I mean, here's a guy. He's only got one platinum album to his name. Uh, hardly any of his albums have charted anywhere in the world. I think he's got a really big cult following. The guy's obviously he's, has a couple of minor hits. I, I think he's one of those guys I think has kind of gotten the shaft throughout his career. He should have been more popular than he was uh, because, quite frankly, listen to his music and he should have been another like Springsteen. He's got that quality to his music. Uh, you know, some people hail him as a, a musical genius. You know, I don't know if I'd argue that. I don't know if I always agree with it, but I think, uh, you know, those genius guys are few and far between. Um, I think he's just a great example of a, of a musician with a very loyal cult following that deserved better. Uh, but he doesn't make the Hall of Fame in my in my opinion. So those are my bottom five. OK, cool. <clears throat> okay so my middle five i'm gonna go with rage against the machine i love i love rage against the machine but i just feel like uh they didn't make enough music they they they're kind of like going on the reputation of what they had they only got the four albums one of them's the covers album three three times platinum for the debut three times platinum for evil empire two times platinum for uh the battle of los angeles um but yeah Big influential band. Uh, you've got the uh, the marriage of of rock and rap there, and they did it rather well. And uh, you know Tom Morello is just such an innovative um, guitarist, and they were political, and they they had a, they had a lot of really cool heaviness to what they were doing, some some aggression. Um, so yeah, they're in there. Um, you know, I I like what you said about waiting, um, but to me. I don't think you should wait if you if you are just like such an obvious choice. Like there are certain ones that you go, wow, okay, it's your time. Yeah, it, yeah, you, you should have been in at the beginning, but we do have this rule. But yeah, White Stripes is perfect for that, uh, like you say. I mean, they just weren't nearly big enough and they should wait kind of thing. Um, so yeah, uh, I've got Willie Nelson here. You know, Willie Nelson is, uh, is a country artist. There is a country hall of fame. It's the Dolly Parton thing all over again kind of thing. I've got Warren Zevon in my uh, middle ones as well. Well, so so again, um, yeah, didn't sell a lot of records. I love Warren Zevon to death. I thought he should have been, uh, like you say, uh, just a massive artist. I, I think those albums are masterpieces. You know, the 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 second self title, or no, actually, the first one was called Wanted Dead or Alive back in '69. But the first major one with an army of people on it, uh, you know, the the entire Avocado Mafia, Laurel Canyon, Troubadour set are all over those records, right? Uh, and they are amazing records. They're my favorite records of that entire genre. You know, Excitable Boy, Bad Luck Streak, and Dancing School. I, I love that. <clears throat> as a quick tribute there's a there's a couple of couple of cds i took out also we know sadly we lost him to cancer he was a a lifelong smoker right um but uh yeah love warren zevon so and you know he's the kind of that that's the other thing about the rock hall that we should mention i mean they they've always had they've always had this uh singer songwriter jan werner rolling stone new york kind of vibe to them and that new york vibe 
definitely, um, you know, transfers over to the Laurel Canyon vibe, right? Um, so they've always loved those critically acclaimed roots country slash type artists. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, you know, you, you wonder he, he could be a kind of guy that, that gets in. Let's complain about one other thing here. Um, you know, that whole voting thing, right? The whole fan voting thing. I wish that thing was like, you vote once and you get one vote, right? It's like, I hate this, exactly. like, go ahead, go back every day and vote kind of thing. It's well, like 10,000 no. times. Who cares? Yeah. It's not going to matter anyway. So go ahead. Vote all I want. went in and voted once and then I remembered, oh yeah, that's right. You can vote every day. This was stupid, right? <laughs> kind of thing. So yeah, I, I wish that thing was just a, a vote once, but actually, you know, when, when I noticed the vote thing, uh, like the one time I did it on the first day or whatever, I think Cindy Lauper was way ahead. Really? Um, yeah. For, for popularity's sake. So, uh, okay. Next I've got tribe called quest, but again, gold, platinum, 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 gold, gold, huge band, right? Huge influential band in, in the whole hip hop scene. But you know, there is in Brooklyn. Now there is a hip hop hall of fame. Right. Um, and I've got George Michael in my middle one as well. Um, you know, he's got a diamond album, right? I mean, that's amazing. Right. Um, so faith in the 87 went diamond and wham has a gold album and the Make It Big album, 84, six times platinum, right? Yeah. So again, is this a rock act? I mean, this is a pretty, this is a pretty annoying act for being so far into pop to the point where they're almost like a boy band act, right? Or at least Wham was, right? Uh, but George Michael, he was a serious artist uh, as he went on uh, with, with the albums. But he went diamond. He went dub uh, double platinum on the second one, platinum on the third one. So he was a massive, massive artist. Sadly, of course, we've lost him as well. So, uh, so that's my middle deck. Cool. All right. So my first one here is going to upset Martin a little bit. Uh, Kate Bush, I think one of the more influential female singers of the last 40 years. I don't deny that at all. I think worldwide, pretty well known. I, I somehow think that her lack of any real success here in North America is going to hurt her a bit and stall her for the hall. I could be wrong there. But here's the kicker, though. The Stranger Things factor, right? Yeah. resurgence of that song could work in her favor so we'll see i have her in in my middle picks here because i think all of my middle picks eventually will get their time and and we'll get in but for, I'm, I'm gonna say no for now but kate bush may be the surprise here a tribe called quest again it's hip-hop it's not really rock but man totally influential uh, all their albums are very popular um I, I'm going to go with a miss here. I don't count them getting in eventually, but I don't think it's going to happen now. Uh, George Michael, another guy I think is going to get in eventually. I mean, you you mentioned the sales. I mean, you can't deny that. I think most people, again, qualify him as pop. And, but I think he, he has one of the best voices of the last like 35, 40 years, I think. I mean, the guy was an amazing singer, some great songs. Uh, and I, I think it's it's really hard to ignore that solo career and the success of Wham. So I think he's going to get his day eventually. I don't think it's going to be this year. My sleeper pick out of my, out of mine here is the spinners. I mean, they've had some monster hits back in the late sixties and early seventies. And the hall always has kind of a soft spot for soul and Motown type acts. I mean, I'll be around and could it be I'm falling in love are unforgettable songs um, and, you know, you mentioned that this type of music is kind of like the roots of rock and roll. So will it be enough to get them in now? I don't know, but uh, we'll see. That's my sleeper pick. Uh, and another one, too. And I had I had this next band in my top ones for getting in. And then I ultimately changed my mind. Uh, Rage Against the Machine. So all four albums were big sellers, highly influential. Again, you mentioned combining rap and rock. Uh, you know, they were kind of controversial with their lyrics which may go against them a little bit, but I think that these these guys were one of the bands that were doing something really different uh, with rock music in the 90s, and I think their time will come. I just don't think it's going to happen quite yet. So those are my five. Yeah, and but Rage Against the Machine, also the lyric thing could be a positive for them as well, right? Yeah. You know, being political like that. And I just want to mention one more thing about George Michael that he's got going against him is the British thing. Right. So that's what they say a lot in uh, in this whole Hall of Fame thing, that there's a little bit of a bias. There's not enough attention 
paid to Britain and and other countries. And you know, Britain's obviously the lion's share one, right? Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, that happens. And and you know, he he doesn't line up with the with the kind of music, you know, that that one core kind of music that everybody complains about the the most uh, as as being part of this that California rock thing, right? <laughs> um, okay, so my my top. Um, or do you want to just go one back? Oh, do you want me to do all of them or go back and forth? What do you, you want to go back and forth? All right, let's go back. Yeah. And forth. Okay. All right. So, so my next one is Kate Bush. So, uh, so now we're in my top deck. These are the four that I want to see in the most. And I, I feel like they have the most credence to get in. I mean, Kate Bush, uh, you look at her record sales. I mean, they, they are pretty big in a lot of markets around the world, just not America. It's, this is a really pronounced one where she's kind of, she's kind of, you know, well, she's a legend everywhere, but she actually even has a lot of, a lot of record sales everywhere. One thing that hurt her, she wasn't much of a tourer. That's for sure. Um, and then, you know, the records are a long time ago and there's just been, you know, a, a, a few things kind of later on or, or whatever. Um, but I think she's massively influential in the whole, um, the Lilith fair or influence on a solo female artist as well. And, and I just love her creativity to me. She's, she's like up there, you know, with a Peter Gabriel kind of thing. I, I always, you know, picture her because of the video with Peter Gabriel, but she really strikes me as a Peter Gabriel type, um, with, uh, you know, super, uh, innovative albums like the dreaming. Um, and then, yeah, the, the next one, Hounds of Love was, was, a, was a big album, right? Um, and again, that was, that was pretty interesting too, but the lyrics have always been great. Uh, even, even she's even had influence as a vocalist on these later vocalists, your Tori Amos's and your Sarah McLaughlin's and, and all that sort of set. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, I think this is a, this is a, a person. It's an easy one. It's not messy. It's one person, uh, and all that. Um, I, I think this is a, this is, this is one that, that kind of has a chance just because because of the gravitas of yeah the- i mean why not strike while the iron is hot right because all of a sudden kate bush is like oh yeah it's amazing how, like, how many people yeah. here in north america are like oh kate bush is this a great new artist it's like no she's yeah. been around a million years which is she's never done anything here in this country now because of that show all of a sudden everybody knows who kate bush is so Might yeah be a this- sneaky sneaky way to get a performance out of kate bush too mm-hmm. right exactly. that's, that's yeah. a rare thing right yeah. Yeah. so yeah. you never know I, I wouldn't i wouldn't put it past them all right yeah So with my top four, I went with two that I'm picking because it's the kind of music I really like. And then I went with, and I went back and forth on a couple of mine. I went with two that I think just makes sense to get them in. Uh, It's not that I necessarily, they're they're necessarily my, uh, that I want them in, but I think it makes all the sense in the world. So I think for me, number four, again, it's not, he's not rock. But man, Willie Nelson is such an icon. And I'm thinking he's not getting any younger. I, you have to think he's got to get his day at some point and get him in while he's still around because you, you blink. I mean, these you know, are all these musical icons are dropping like flies, Martin. So I'm yeah. thinking give Willie his day in the sunshine while he's still with us before he's not and just make it happen. It, it, again, I'm not no, any Willie Nelson fan, but I just think it makes sense. He's not really rock, but he has just been a musical icon for so many years. Everybody knows Willie. He's done so many great things for country music and, you know, acting and all this stuff. He's still here with us. Give him his day. So that's yeah, my number four. Funny, yeah. All right, cool. All right. My number three is Sheryl Crow. Again, I'm not a big Sheryl Crow fan, but when I when I actually play a Sheryl Crow album, I, I like it, right? I mean, it's it's the kind of music I I, I would like. It's just I kind of feel like I just never got around to it. Right. Uh, But yeah, she was absolutely massive. And I love the fact that she's kept on making records. So I, I, I love when an artist like does it because they love, they love the art, they love the job. They're not in it for the money. Uh, So she keeps making records. So she had a bunch of albums in the two thousands. In fact, in fact, most of her catalog, uh, like, what do we got here? One, two, three, four. It's like eight or nine records in the two thousands. Right. So, so I love that. Uh, when, when an artist does that, but, but yeah, um, Tuesday night music club, seven times platinum, um, Cheryl Crow self-titled three times platinum, the globe sessions, platinum, platinum. And I think she has, yeah, she has a three times platinum compilation album. And I always look at that compilation thing, like scroll down and see, I, 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 
I think there's a there, there's a neat theme there. There's maybe a show there or something. But um, I I like seeing that um, that when a band is big and they put in the work, they're usually rewarded with uh, with a compilation album being one of their biggest sellers. And it's really cool to see that she's got a got a three times platinum. Did well in Europe and in Canada as well. Um, so just a beloved artist, uh, you know, basically uh, uh, around the world. So yeah, big 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 act. Again, it's simple. It's one name. Um, I, I think, uh, I think Cheryl Crow's got, got a really good, her music even lines up with the whole, the whole, you know, thing we complain about, right? She's, yeah. she's kind of like a modern day avocado mafia yeah. artist, right? I will echo what you just said. So Cheryl Crow to me is a slam dunk this year. I really think she makes it an easy, she has been a multi-genre superstar for a long time. She ticks all the boxes. She's done rock and pop and country, right? Uh, one huge album after another, tons of hit singles. I think it's a no-brainer to put Cheryl Crow in the Rock and Roll of Fame. Cool. Excellent. Okay. All right. My number two pick is Soundgarden. Um, I love Soundgarden to death. I've I've, you know, since day one, buying everything is a new release, starting with the EPs and all that stuff. Um, I just think uh a, they're they're really creative. They did a lot of great things for hard rock and heavy metal, you know, even though it's called grunge or whatever. But I mean, they were the most progressive of all those grunge bands. You know, every every grunge band has has a adjective you can add, I guess, to the front of their name. And for them, it's kind of progressive, right? Um, very dangerous. They could be bluesy. They could write long songs. Sometimes the recordings weren't so great. Uh, I've heard rumors that that they were kind of on and off live as well. Um, you know, Chris, Chris could be one to lose his voice uh, and stuff. Um, and it's 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 kind of complicated music, but they they were a big band with a lot of hits. They were beloved. I mean, I don't I don't recall anybody ever writing bad reviews about them. They're just uh, they're just literally they're critics, darlings and a big band. Um, yeah. So the first couple didn't certify, which is surprising to me. Bad Motor Finger is double platinum. Super Unknown went six times platinum. Uh, then down on the upside, we're down to platinum. And then and then they came back, which is good. And sadly, we lost Chris, but they did come back with a very, very sound garden sounding album called King Animal. Um, but, yeah, it's interesting to see they. They had the one really big album, but, uh, you know, and kind of a, a nice, exciting lead up to it. But then, uh, you know, down on the upsides, only platinum, which is surprising to me, actually. I, I thought it would be higher than that. Strikes me as one of those situations where there's like a, like a go back and get a certification and probably be higher kind of thing. But uh, yeah, love them to death. I, I would love to see them get in because, uh, you know, I'm always a champion for for the heavy stuff for these heavier bands getting in. So. I will echo that. I think we need an influx of real rock here in this uh, in the the winners circle, and I I am going to put my boat in for Soundgarden. Uh, yeah, I mean everything you said. I think they were a highly influential band. No one talks shit about Soundgarden ever. The critics love them. The fans love them. Their peers love them. I think uh, they stood the test of time you know you had all these bands coming out of seattle doing this new grunge thing a lot of them fell by the wayside soundgarden persevered they kind of once grunge was no longer in favor they continued putting out heavy albums that people bought uh there's the chris cornell factor one of the great singers of the last 30 years for sure and like i said i think the rock needs an influence of true purebred rock bands uh in the winter circle this year so i'm gonna put my vote in for soundgarden as well Cool. All right. So not, not a lot of, not a lot of surprise here. You've, you've seen, you've seen the list of nominees and you see who we haven't talked about yet, but uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to put my hat on uh, for, for Iron Maiden. Number one, it's my number one pick, but I'm going to put my hat on where um, I wrote these articles for Goldmine over the years, arguing that a certain band should get in. And I think I did one for deep purple. Yes. And Judas priest. I don't think I ever did a rush one, but I wrote those articles with a very um, uh, sort of like arguing the facts almost to the point where this is a band that you haven't heard. So what I'm not going to say is, oh, Iron Maiden's awesome. Oh, I love Iron Maiden. What I'm going to say is is just more factual stuff about Maiden that I, that I, I think are the reasons they should get in. So number one. Uh, I've often made the argument you could make a list of my favorite new wave of British heavy metal albums. There'd be like five Iron Maiden albums on it if I made an honest list. It'd be a very boring list, but they're but that be so they they absolutely ruled that whole um, return of metal. Um, 
as uh, as Greg Renoff famously put on the cover of his awesome Van Halen book, Van Halen Rising, he said, uh, Southern California party band that saved heavy metal. Iron Maiden, you could say, saved heavy metal with this great influx of, of awesome creativity. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll say a little bit that they are, that they are awesome um, because they, they really had a lot of uh, variety to what they were doing, some, some fresh, but they, but they kept it all heavy metal. It was pure. They also went through the challenge of having to change your lead singer and prevailed. Um, they also sold a lot of records, um, but that's kind of a weird thing with Iron Maiden where uh, they don't seem to have really gone uh, for the certifications very much. It's a thing we talk about with David Bowie. So when you look at their certifications, they're not very impressive. And I think they might, they should be much higher than they were. Having said that, I don't think there's any question that they sold a lot of tickets. And now we're just talking the early days, right? So then they go through, they persevere. So that's the thing. They, they face the challenge again of getting another lead singer. Doesn't work out too well, but they had to do this twice. So you feel sorry for them a little bit, right? Um, but they persevere. And one of the cool things they do is they have one of the biggest comebacks of all time. It's a super inspiring type comeback where they come back they make a bunch of records, none of them sell very well, but, but they just become this massive, massive ticket draw. And, and they, they just become uh, this really interesting, unique rock and roll story of a band that comes back. Maybe it's not that unique, but, but uh, f f to see, to see a pure metal band come back and never change their sound. That's the other thing. They never went in for any trends whatsoever. They just kept their sound exactly the same as literally from the debut album. It really hasn't changed that much. Right. Um, but yeah, so that's the amazing thing about them. And the last thing I'll say about Maiden is uh, is they have this phenomenal uh, mascot merch thing that they did, which is kind of unique uh, in, you know, or, you know, other bands have done it. I'm not really thinking, I can't think of anybody before them and nobody I don't think has done it bigger. Um, but so for all those reasons, putting it together, one more reason Um the fitness level and and how good they are live and that these guys have have kept their feet on the ground. There hasn't been a lot of scandals. Um, you've even got a guy who flies airplanes, right? Uh, yeah. And fences, you know, so some really cool, cool side stories with them as well. But yeah, I, I love the fact that um, these guys are still racing around the stage and jumping around and uh, and uh, that that's really inspiring as well. And there's six of them, right? Um, so yeah, for all those reasons, um, I think Maiden, uh, Maiden, you know, if, if you've never even heard their music, I think you could you can make a case just based on all these great narratives with the band that they should be in. Hundred percent. And I'm going to go with Maiden as well for all the reasons you said. I mean, there, there's almost there's no reason not to put them in. Right. They have been one of the biggest, if not the biggest metal band on the planet for like 40 years and running. And again, not fully based on album sales, right? You had that string of five or six or seven platinum albums, just platinum in the 80s. Uh, but you've got, other than like the short period of time when Bruce left and Blaze came in where they were playing smaller venues. I mean, you're, you're talking about a band who has consistently played in and sold out hockey arenas and even larger venues and even open air festivals for like 40 years, consistently a draw on the concert circuit, no matter what country they play in worldwide. That's right. Merch yeah, is ridiculous, right. right? I mean, the whole merch thing and, and uh, everything about the uh, all, all the stuff that the trademarks and Eddie and all that sort of thing. Uh, the respect of their peers is ridiculously high. I just think the longevity for these guys is hard to ignore. And the one thing I will say is if you're the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and you can't induct Iron Maiden into the Hall of Fame on their first time that they're on the ballot, then you need to stop even mentioning heavy metal bands for this award. Because if you can't do it for these guys, it's it, I'm I'm pissed off enough about what they did to Priest last year, yeah. but they put him in on this performance thing, whatever. Yeah. Um, if you can't induct Iron Maiden here, then you need to just stop with all metal bands going forward because this is the band that should get in above all of them. Yeah, absolutely. I, and I just want to reiterate, you made a great point there. Um, they're such a world band. They're one of the biggest world bands where they're just loved all over the world. That's a huge thing. Uh, what was the other thing I was going to mention about them? Oh, yeah. 
Um, one of the most discussed bands on the internet. I mean, the fans are so rabid. They oh, they yeah. they really command the internet. I mean, anything that has to do with Maiden will be super super discussed. So you you can tell they have very knowledgeable and dedicated and uh, you know fans. And and also we all have buddies who've seen Maiden fifty times, thirty times, a hundred times. I've got a buddy who's seen them over a hundred times, right? Um, yeah. So it's so a, a, an absolute nuts fan base. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, you're right. That's a, that's a really good point that that uh like this this should be an absolute shoe in and and yeah, it's such a black mark against heavy metal if you don't put them in. Right. Yeah. I mean, and you bring up a great point about the passion of the fan base worldwide. I mean, a new maiden, I mean, this this is how ridiculous it is. A new maiden album comes out. It is discussed, analyzed, poured over by the fans for months, years after it comes out. Because we know we're not, we're gonna have to wait a couple of years for the next one. So in all that time in between, everybody's kind of tearing it apart. And what's good about it? What's not good about it? What would you do different? Why it's why it's good? Why it's bad? Whatever. People care about it. It's not just I oh, will listen to it once, never. No, they'll listen to it and keep talking about it, whether they like it or not. And every tour that they announce again, is discussed and analyzed what the song list is going to be, which songs need to be in the set list. We've heard these in the set list too much. They're going to play too much of the new album. They're playing too many old classics. When are we going to get so? What other band has this kind of fan base that gives a shit so deeply than Iron Maiden fans? I mean, that counts for something, right? Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> excellent. Yeah. And one last point about Maiden is just simply the fact of, uh, again, they're in that department of bands that, uh, that, that, likes making new music is excited yeah. about it they go on tour they play the whole album live everybody complains all that kind of stuff right but they yeah. but they you know regularly enough they're out there making new music so. yeah whether you like it or not right they're they're still making new music that sounds like iron maiden and yeah. that's that's what it's all about you know you mentioned that earlier it's like they still all, all throughout their career everything sounds like maiden yeah they don't deviate all right so we've also put together a list uh five each of bands that you know, they just got overlooked here again. Some of these uh, we've been kind of crying for for years, but we've each picked out five that, uh, you know, the hall needs to give some consideration to. I'll have Martin uh, give us his list here. and we'll. Uh... Yeah. OK, so so um, Blue Oyster Cult. So Blue Oyster Cult is one I hear talked about year after year after year. People complain on our various Facebook pages about it. And I've always been like, you know what? Blue Oyster Cult is I've often called them my favorite band of all time. I love Blue Oyster Cult to death, written a bunch of books on them. Totally love Blue Oyster Cult. But I, I always try to be like that, that guy who tries to be objective about it. But I feel like now uh, it's starting to feel like it's time, right? Um, I don't think they've ever been nominated. Um, they have a, a recent album that is quite beloved. It's considered a great comeback. The symbol remains. So that's a little part of it, but I think just basically with the passage of time uh, and they sold a lot of records. So when people would bring this up to me six, seven years ago, I'd say, ah, no, there's, there's other ones. There's other bigger ones. Right. Um, so that's one Pantera. I'm always excited about Pantera. I just, I just think back to that great run of albums, all of them certifying. Um, they were just like, like, you know, masters of metal doing such a great job, job of it. Um, you know, no, no, uh, no, no, um, loose parts on what's that what what's that expression no uh no weak links whatever it's just an absolute amazing amazing band with this incredible history that weird long prehistory of being an indie band and then getting on and then just ruling the 90s basically yeah. um so yeah i think pantera should get in uh and obviously you know we you know seeing what's happened with Vinny and dime um so uh i have thin lizzy so thin lizzy has i think they have been I think it was last year they were nominated um, and I really wasn't feeling it. And I, I don't know how much I'm feeling it here again. I've called thin Lizzie, my favorite band of all time. Um, but yeah, they're, they're a pretty, they're a, you know, they're absolutely beloved and they had a lot of records, but they certainly didn't sell a lot of records and they're, and they're just beloved by, you know, kind of like a, like a tight knit bunch of folks. Um, but yeah, maybe it's getting time for thin Lizzie and um the Smiths, uh, the Smiths are legendary and Morrissey continues on that whole thing. Um, but that's one just maybe for a little variety. Um, but again, they're they're uh, very English. They're almost too English to get in. So I don't know. And then my final one is Foreigner. Um, 
Foreigner, I've I've read some things where Lou has has made veiled comments that uh, oh, there's something personal between one you know one of the members in the hall or whatever. So one of that members is either him or Mick, probably it's probably Mick, um, but uh, I don't know. So Foreigner, uh, Foreigner has been snubbed. Uh, absolutely huge, huge selling band with a lot of hits, uh, but they are they are making the kind of music that rubs the Hall of Fame the wrong way maybe even more than heavy metal and prog and that's like yeah. non-critically acclaimed poppy hard rock Anymore, right yeah. yeah yeah they just don't they just are not uh they are not on with the with the aor right so uh so it's it's the kind of bands that that critics and people like yan werner look down upon the most right um but such a massive band so those are my five yeah, but I think, you know, they, they put Journey in a couple of years ago and you have to think if Journey is going to get in, you got to put Foreigner in because they're kind of like cut from the same cloth almost and they were yeah. contemporaries. And I, I think Foreigner's Day has to come at some point. Yeah, I really think, I, again, unless there's an issue there. So I don't know. All right. So uh, I'm going to go with, uh, for one, I've been calling for them for years, Kansas. Again, it's, it's the whole prog rock thing. We know the whole doesn't really like prog rock bands. But we got Genesis in, we got Yes in, Kansas's Day hopefully will come. They're one of the true U.S. prog bands that we've had uh, for the last 50 years. And, you know, again, a couple massive hits, a string of really, you know, top selling albums. I think they should get uh, nominated at some point. Uh, for sheer influence alone, how about King Crimson? Again, the prog thing, they don't really have a lot of big selling albums, right? Their albums sold moderately back in the late 60s, early 70s, uh, into the early 80s. But as far as influence goes, I mean, you know, on so many musicians and other bands. So they might be one to consider. Uh, Jethro you know, Tull. Pete, are, are, are King Crimson like the coolest band that ever existed? I mean, they have to be, right? Yeah. They the are the coolest so... band that the majority of people have no clue about, yeah. right? They, they're exactly the most... Uh... The, the what's that word not not imposing but um daunting uh what's the what's the other word for it? just the coolest just such a like they're a weird noise rock collective right they're a terrorist noise rock anti anti-establishment collective that uh yeah, yeah. In, in their, their music has taken history. so many twists yeah. and turns throughout the years and decades it's like you can't really you know they get pigeonholed in this whole progressive rock thing but you know their music goes all over the place, you know, yeah. jazz and heavy metal and new wave and experiment, experimental ambient, all, all this. Yeah. The music of King Crimson is frightening and not for everybody, but uh, that that's like a selfish pick for me. So uh, Jethro Tull is, I, I think they've been ignored for way too long. I mean, you go and you look at like the sales numbers for all those Tull albums in the seventies, staggering platinum plus albums one after another they had they had two number one selling albums in uh thick as a brick and a passion play you've got the endearing classic that is aqualung right with, with all those fm radio staples i mean all these songs that that they still play on the radio from jethro tull they were so unique bringing flute into rock music right i mean combining blues and jazz and hard rock and prog uh, folk all into one seamless sound yeah. i mean they've been ignored way too long uh, I'm also going to go with Styx. Again, a string of Platinum Plus albums and hit singles still playing out there to this day. Um, they've been ignored for way too long. And last but not least, again, um, we're not talking about a lot of albums, but Boston. Again, it's another one of those bands, kind of like Foreigner, like Journey, that the Hall probably hates. But man, one of the most impactful, influential, and best-selling debuts of all time. A really big selling second album. Their third and fourth album sold really, really well. Their songs are still played on the radio today. Highly influential band. You know, the things that as far as like the production techniques, what you could do uh, in the studio with all sorts of different gadgets and technology to make a great sounding record. Uh, I find it you know crazy that they haven't been at least nominated once. So there you go. Nice. Cool. And there's others we, we have, but we'll save them for next year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it'll be interesting to see what happens but yeah yeah like like i say i mean i it's i i love getting in these uh these discussions on facebook with people who just hate the hall kind of thing because i yeah. i feel like it's kind of all we got right it's uh it's all we got that works works half well and uh, and just how upset people get about it means it's got traction 
Yeah, well, you know, rock fans hate the hall because so many bands have gotten in and been nominated who aren't rock and so many great bands get ignored and that's why they hate because if if, if every year was just filled with rock bands and all the bands get uh, you know uh, acknowledged at some point i don't think people would have an issue with this it's just that the lines have been blurred so much in recent years well, maybe not even recent years maybe it's always been that way mm -hmm. but you know when you start inducting you know, rap and hip hop and country and, you know, anything that's not, you know, soul, uh, that's not really rock. I mean, there's the whole argument too about, well, the roots of rock are this and that, and I get all that, but, uh, you know, it, it's, the lines are so blurred now that I think that's what, I mean, I, I've even seen people who are like, well, if you're going to nitpick about, you know, blurring the lines, maybe metal bands should not get nominated or, or inducted because metal is not rock, but it is. I mean, metal is just a more aggressive form of rock music. So there's yeah. all these little like intricacies and nitpicking that goes on. So, I mean, I get it, but uh, it's still always fun to talk about yeah. whether you think it's uh, a, a viable uh, entity. Or... Well, one more quick note. Remember that our, both of our top picks have been one of the bands that has complained about the rock hall saying, yes. I don't know. I don't think stupid. We don't have, you know, it means nothing. We don't care if we get in. So it, it'll be funny to see what happens if they, uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling, I mean, is it, if, if you were completely um, objective, who else here really, even on an objective level, do you think should get in more than maiden? I mean, uh. Cheryl Crow, maybe, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Well, sure. I I think Cheryl Crow is going to get. In. I mean, that, to yeah. me, that's that's a slam dunk. I don't see why not. Again, I'm not saying that that's she's my yeah. favorite out of all these picks. I'm just it just makes total sense. It makes total sense based on, yeah. on their criteria. But I, but I'm almost feeling like out of all 14 of these, uh, even if I didn't like anything Maiden did, even if I hated Maiden, I'd, I'd almost feel like they're they are kind of the biggest based on the history. Yeah, I, I yeah, I mean it, it makes total sense. I, I think you just can't ignore them. Will they though? Yeah, who knows? When when is the when when do they announce the winners? I don't, I don't even I don't know. know. I think this is like an April thing. Okay, like no, we'll we'll find out. So so for now, everybody watching, uh, we're gonna get comments. People saying, "Who cares? Why did you guys spend an hour talking about this?" And they'll be like, "I want this band, this band." So so yeah. whatever you think, whether you're plus or minus uh put it in the comments below anyway it's it's always fun talking about this so uh i don't lose any sleep over this at all but i always enjoy uh spending some time talking about it so when martin brought this up is like should we do an episode on this i'm like yeah why not every year i say i'm never going to talk about this again and every year i still do anyway because it's fun it's fun so uh anyway martin uh what's going on in your neck of the woods uh new, and new books in stock or what's available that people can scarf up i know you got that uh, well you see book how's that going? yeah there's the acd so I, I forgot my other uh my other props here so there's my there's my maiden framed up dealy. Oh yeah, nice. And there's my sound guard framed up dealy. Right. Cool. Oh, look at that. So uh, but yeah, martinpopoff.com for the books. The ACDC is the recent one. ACDC at 50, big coffee table book that just came in last week. And I've still got the Bowie at 75. And uh the audio podcast is History and Five Songs with Martin Popoff, 193 episodes of that. The last one was bad drum sounds, and the one before that was good drum sounds. And we've got the video channel, the uh, Contrarians. That's right. So, uh, so cool. So, what do we got coming up here? So, we've got uh, tomorrow. We've got the UK connection happening tomorrow afternoon at two p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, join uh, Stephen Reed, uh, Simon Bray, and myself as we dissect and rank the songs on Motorhead's Ace of Spades. So we're ranking the songs on a classic album. That is tomorrow. Sunday, we've got uh, ranking the albums, and I'll be doing the catalog, the small catalog of Cynic, great progressive uh, metal band. And then we kickstart the work. We've got a fun show planned for you on Monday. We've got the uh, first ever Hudson Valley Squares in the Proxy crossover show. We're going to be talking about bands, heavy bands that made a prog album and prog bands that made a heavy album. So everybody's going to be talking about a couple instances where this happened and uh, come see, uh, you know, the crew from both shows together on the same Zoom all at once. It's going to be chaos. There's probably going to be 10 or more people. So but it'll be fun seeing some of these people interact with each other on that show. So uh, stay tuned for that and more. And of course, we'll be back here next Friday here on the Funhouse 
Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. All together, all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And click that little notification bell so you get alert of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button. Also down below, we have the links to our Ko-Fi page for channel donations as well as our merch page. So uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. For Martin Popoff, I am Pete Pardo. Have a good weekend, everybody. See you in a week. Bye-bye.